Shane back with you from Guitar Work. Welcome back. Uh, I'm excited about this one as I am for all these songs. Uh, this is John Denver's uh, Leaving on a Jet Plane. I'm going to do a campfire version of this. Uh, I'm going to try to really, really make it easy finger picking. Uh, if this is your first venture into finger picking, it's a good way to start without a doubt. Give you a couple of patterns on each chord to chug away with. And you can use these patterns on a million songs. So this is great. I'll send this one out to my niece and my nephews in, uh, in Spain. I hope you're doing well over there, guys. Challenging times for sure. Um, uh, you want to get to uh, patreon.com slash guitar work and grab these sheets. There's going to be three sheets. One has got your finger picking patterns. The other one's got the actual song with the chords over top of the lyrics, etc. Uh, again, patreon.com slash guitar at work. Go grab those sheets and I'll be referring to those. I've got them here in my trusty iPad beside me. Um, I want to thank you for coming back and subscribing and all that good YouTube stuff. Thumbs up have really helped me a lot and I appreciate that very much. Uh, let's jump right in here. Um, you're going to need a G. You're going to need a G chord. Uh, you can use this version of G, which I call the big kids version, or you can use your four finger G, whichever one you like. I like this guy uh, in this song because it's going to C so often. You notice it from that G to C happens so often, right? Uh, so easy to get to from there. Very little movement. And you're also going to need a D. That's it. G, C, and D, and you're all set. We're going to have a nice easy finger picking pattern. You may have heard this referred to as Travis picking as we get into it, or alternating bass. Um, e straight ahead, and again, you can play a million songs with it. I'm going to jump on a G right here, like that, and uh, looking at your sheet, if you haven't read this kind of stuff before, uh, there are six lines. Six lines. Each of those lines is a string. Just remember that the bottom line is the thickest string. So it might look to you it's upside down on paper if you haven't read that before. Uh, you get quickly get used to it. That's so pitch ascends and descends on paper as it would in, in standard notation. Um, so easy to read. And I want to mention that you'll see the dot. You'll see a dot, um, and that, that of course is to play that particular string. If the line is going down underneath that dot, that means it's a thumb. Yeah, your thumb pulls double duty. Um, so anything with a line or a stem, it's called a stem going down, that is a thumb, a right hand thumb. A line going up, it's going to be fingers. Don't expect that to be consistent across the internet. Uh, that's how it used to be, but it's the wild west out there in terms of no notation, of course, out in the internet. Um, we're going to need your thumb to play on this G chord. We're going to play this thumb right here. There we go, low. E just like that. And you're going to notice your thumb pull goes double duty here. Before I get to the actual pattern, your thumb's going to end up on G going low E to the D. Low E, D. Low E, D. Thus the term alternating bass. Your thumb is acting almost like the left hand of a piano there, you know, boom, 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 boom. And in between those thumbs, we add some fingers. And it's very important to assign certain fingers to certain strings so it's not just willy-nilly. Again, if this is your first jump into finger picking. Um, it's pretty typical that your thumb handles the lowest three strings, your thickest strings, so thumb, 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 and then your first, second, and third handle those upper strings, those treble strings. So there's my stance. So I got thumb, 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 and first, second, third. If you stick with that from song to song, it won't feel new every time, and you'll have a system that you can kind of fall back on. Remember when you learned to type, like the home row? system. At least that's how I learned to type. Home row, you put your hands in a certain place and then you know where you are. Same thing with finger picking. There's your grab. Ah, okay, I'm all set up like that. Um, so we're looking at, I'm going to go thumb and there's going to be exceptions to that even in this song. Sorry. Thumb. And then your second finger is playing the B string. There you go, pulling up towards you. And then your thumb plays the D string. And your first finger plays the G string. I'll do that very slowly many times. Have no fear. It's going thumb. Second on the B string, thumb on the D string, and first finger to the G string. Now remember, with these videos, uh, you may want to stop tape right there. If you feel like you've digested that, stop tape right there and just sit there and burn it in. Thumb, two, thumb, one. Just like that, you don't go round, round slowly. Let's give you a close up of that. Now that just goes twice, I should say, in the bar. It just goes twice. You repeat that and that is one bar. And it's, those are eighth notes. I'm going one, and two, and, and again, three, and four, and. Hope you can get a good close up of that. Let's do that a bunch of times. Here's thumb, two, thumb, one. And thumb, two, thumb, one. Yeah, now just to be clear, we're looking at the first pattern for G. There's two patterns given for each chord. Let's do the first ones on each one, and then let's take a quick look at the second one later, just for a little variation. So I'm just looking at the first pattern on G. Here it is, three, four, thumb, two, 
Thumb. One. Thumb. Two. Thumb. One. Thumb. Two. Thumb. One. And just watch out for what I'll call a cigarette lighter stroke with your thumb. You don't want it coming from that knuckle right there. You don't want it coming from that little knuckle. You want it kind of emanating from that big guy back here. That'll give you a consistent base. And try to keep your thumb nice and straight. It's an, the unfortunate term for that is dead thumb. Keep them locked just like that. Thumb. Two. Thumb. One. Thumb. Two. Thumb. One. Two more. Let's do it. Thumb. Two. Thumb. One. Thumb. Two. Thumb. One. There we go. Okay, great. Now, G, as you may know, has no X's in the chord diagram. What I mean by that is all six strings are available. On the C chord, that's not the case typically. So you got a C chord now, and this guy here, the low E, the big thick guy, he's out of bounds. You'll see him X'd out on most chord diagrams. So we have to, our thumb now, instead of going from the low E, he's going to go from the A, and that's the only difference. So here's thumb on the, on the C, and then same thing here, second finger plays the B string, and thumb plays the D. And then first finger plays the G string. So it's the same thing, but what used to be thumb on the low E is now thumb on the A string to accommodate that C chord. Here we go again. Thumb, two, thumb, one. And again, thumb, two, thumb, one. That's a C again. Let's do it again. Three, four, going thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one, two more, thumb, two, thumb, one, let's go again, thumb, two, thumb, one, hey, there we go, there's your C chord, and again, stop tape, stop tape, come back and mark your place, and we'll go to the D next. Now the D um, is our exception to that assignment of fingers to strings we talked about earlier. Um, the D has two X's, meaning these guys are typically out of bounds. So we bring the whole system down toward the floor. So your thumb will now alternate between the D string and the G string. Get to know the names of those strings. As you can tell, it's tricky without them. You see all sorts of uh, mnemonic devices, Eddie Eight Dynamite, Goodbye Eddie, things like that. Easter bunnies get drunk at Easter, going backwards. Whatever works for you, it, uh, it's, it's good to know them for sure. I'm sitting on a D now, and my thumb is gonna play the D string, and then my middle finger is gonna play the high E. So everything has come down, shifted one toward the floor. Here it is again, thumb on the D, and here is my second finger, high E, now thumb on the G string, and first finger now plays the B string. There it is there. Thumb, two, thumb, one. There we go, one more time on the D. Thumb, two, thumb, one. Let's do a bunch of those. Let's do a bunch of D patterns together, and that's it guys. That's it, like oh, that's all you need to know to play through the song. So let's do a couple more Ds and we'll put it together. Here's D, three, four, thumb, Two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, last one coming, thumb, two, thumb, one, there we go. Okay, so we've got our three patterns, <coughs> pardon me, we've got three patterns. The first pattern on, e on each chord there. We'll get to the second ones again later. Um, so now this, this song is G, C, G, C, G, C, D, D. So it's completely repetitive. It's a, such a beautiful song, but it's a good one to start finger picking on because it is fairly predictable and it doesn't monkey around a whole lot. So every time you see a chord name on your sheet, again, go get these sheets from patreon.com slash guitar at work. And uh, every time you see a chord name, uh, you play one full pattern. And what is one full pattern? Here's a G, one, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one. That's one full pattern. I know it feels like two because you're doing it twice, but that counts as one pattern. So do each each of these twice. One, one, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb. That equals one bar or one pattern. So I'm going to go G, C, G, C, G, C, D, D. Very, very slow. Here it comes. Three, four, G. C. G. C. Here's a 
this G again. Another one. C. Here comes my D. D is going to go twice. Do it again. Here we go. And if we, again, stop tape right there and get that together, you may find changing chords um, a little bit tricky and to keep the continuity. I want to say that uh, on, a, on a G and a C, the last note in the pattern is an open string. So if I go G, here it comes, here comes my C now. I'm going to leave this G chord. I'll be in motion on that last note because it's an open string. There you go. So that, that kind of helps. Uh, continuity. Uh, and you say, hey, I don't quite hear the song in there. Well, of course, it needs a vocal over top and needs a little more speed, right? So it all blends together. The ma magic of finger picking is when it all just joins together like that. I'll give you that lovely swirl. Here it is a little quicker. Follow along. Here it's three, four. That's your C. Back to G. D here, ba -da -da. Chorus is ba -da 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 -da. the chorus is exactly the same as that. Um, so I'll keep saying it, but stop tape there, get that together. Usually, what I see when people are trying to do this uh, when we're working one on one is uh, this hand gets faster than this hand quite quickly. Like all of a sudden, you're like, okay. Whoa, I'm cooking, I'm cooking along. But maybe you can't change chords quite that quickly. So only practice as fast as you can actually get to that new chord on time. Otherwise, this guy kind of gets hyper-developed, and this guy will, he's, it's harder to catch up that way. That's asking too much of him for there. Um, I want to bring you to the second pattern now. Um, it's nice to have some variation. You could play that first pattern all the way through the song, and everybody will love it. Um, this, it's nice to have a bit of variation. The only difference in the second pattern, I'm going up to G now, looking at your sheet. Um, it starts with what we call a pinch. So if you've done Dust in the Wind, songs like that, um, it starts with a pinch, which means two notes. So you're looking at pattern number two. Instead of separating the first two notes, as we did in that first pattern, I'm going to play them both at the same time. And that's referred to as a pinch. So yeah, it kind of feels like you're pinching it. So thumb and second. There we go. And the rest of the pattern is the same. So I'll go pinch, thumb, one, and then thumb, two thumb one so it's the same thing but we've got a pinch instead of separating those two so here it is again g pinch and notice the pause before you play this next thumb um, let's do it again so pinch thumb one thumb two thumb one and very important i tell you that the first pattern was what we call eighth notes it was literally counted one and two and three and four and the second pattern starts with a quarter note if you don't know what that is no big deal just pause so you go one two and that second thumb doesn't come in until beat two but don't let that bog you down i think you can do this easily by ear i'll sit on a g chord doing pattern number two here it is three four pinch thumb one thumb two thumb one repeating three four pinch thumb two back to back without any time in between three four pitch thumb one thumb two thumb here it comes again pitch for that big pause there a right? big pause it won't feel so big once you've got the speed there we go and I'll go to C now and I'll before that just to wet your whistle a bit is if I go from pattern one to pattern two, you'll hear a neat little um, bit of variation. So here's thumb number one. Here's pattern number two. This breaks it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, 
the C chord is to start the same way. I'm looking at pattern number two on the C chord. You start with the pinch. Remember, the thumb's got to come down toward the floor one. And because C has this guy X'd out, so I'm going pinch, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one. Let's do it again. Three, four, pinch, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb. That's your C. I'm sure you're reading that okay. The last one is D. Remember D, that specialty case because there's two X's there. Everything comes down toward the floor. So here's thumb and middle finger. We're going to do the pinch. So pinch. Thumb comes to the G. First. Thumb. Second. Thumb. First. Here it is again. D. Three. Four. Pinch. Thumb. One. Thumb. Two. Thumb. Hey, there we go. That's two patterns. Now it is completely up to you uh, when you switch. There's no right or wrong. You can play pattern one on the G, pattern two on the C, or pattern two the whole way, pattern one the whole way, it doesn't matter. It just gives you a little bit of ammo and a little bit of vocabulary in there. So I'll randomly, I'll try to shout them out ahead. Here, here's a, let's say, here's a chorus -y bit here. To I'll start with pattern number one, three, four. Pattern number two on the C. It's random. G, pattern number two. Pattern number one on the C. Pattern number one on the G. Pattern number two on the C. Pattern number two on the D. Number two. Number one. Now here's G. Pattern number two. And I'm just, I wouldn't play it the same way twice, honestly, so I'm not even sure if it's a good idea to. to to do it that way uh, because you might try to copy that no do it your own way get get both of them in there and it just feels good so then when you're actually playing it doesn't feel memorized or anything it's actually the verb to play to be playful right so if we get it up to tempo one two three bottom down So I thought it was a good idea. We've, we've had a few tough songs in the last uh, last couple of months, uh, big finger picking, epic type things like Salisbury Hill and Fire and Rain. This brings you right back to what I call, or what we call, uh, accompaniment patterns. So you could apply these again to a million songs, and it doesn't have to be the exact finger picking that is in the song to carry the day, right? Because there's actually multiple guitars on the recording. And it's kind of hard to track what each one of them is doing, and it's often the case when you're recording, you multi-track them to make it sound giant like that. Um, so use these as just good solid meat and potatoes accompaniment chords, uh, finger picking patterns, and you could finger pick your favorite songs, even if they were not finger picked on the recordings. It's just a nice way to play. You just do a sort of a, a down version of it, you know, pretty. Um, so again, go grab those sheets from uh, patreon.com slash guitar at work. There's three of them there for you. One has the finger picking patterns we just did. The other two pages uh, is the actual song with the chords over top. Um, really, really fun, guys, and I seriously appreciate all your suggestions, your comments and suggestions, and uh, your thumbs up have meant a lot. Thanks for subscribing and all that good stuff, and I wish you all the best. Have fun with this one. Let me know how you're doing. I'll meet you in the comments below, I think I'm supposed to say. Okay, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.